Hey, what's up, my friends? And welcome to another round of Shop Talk. Hey guys, thanks for being here, and happy Valentine's Day. I got you this card. I choo-choo choose you. Enjoy. Hey, and it's also my first Shop Talk for my new place here in Ithaca. Pretty cool. But before I get to your questions, somebody I want you to meet, say hello to Pixie, the newest team member of the Pixel Art Shop. She often enjoys sitting in the back of my chair or watching me make perler art, offering little meows of encouragement. She was recently adopted from the local shelter. I have no doubt she'll be making some cameos in some videos soon. But for now, let's get to your questions. Where can I find the patterns on your website? That is a fair question, because I really don't have a section of pixelartshop.com solely dedicated to patterns yet. But when in doubt, you can always go to the video of the pattern you want and click the DIY link in the description. Also, I always post my patterns in the news section, so you can find them all there by using the search function too, pretty handy. Or if you just want to browse, you never know what's going to pique your interest. What projects haven't gotten videos? Oh gosh, a ton of the mini pics pieces, some of the more abstract stuff, a lot of retro gaming pieces. Yeah, I don't make a video for everything, not even most things really. So if you don't want to miss my stuff I'm releasing that doesn't make it to YouTube, I recommend checking out my Instagram, KyleMcCoy37, or my Facebook, and of course, pixelartshop.com. And if you want to get ahead of the game, you can always become an investor on my Patreon and get sneak peeks of upcoming projects and videos too. Do you get inspired by other artists or pieces you see online? Absolutely, all the time! You know I'm a big fan of that subreddit, r Beat Sprites. People are always posting really cool things there. Some of you are kind enough to send me photos of things that you've made, because I inspired you to get into the Perler Beat craft, and then that kind of inspires me back, so it becomes like, a feedback loop of creativity, it's awesome. Oh, and since I joined Instagram, you know, there's no shortage of amazing artists on there who do perler, pixel art, stitching, painting. Even if you never post anything on Instagram, it's worth joining just to see what other people are doing. Really cool stuff, very inspiring. How did you sort your beads back when you would buy tubs of different colors? Uh, I never bought those big tubs. I've always gone the individual bag routes. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm patient, but I am nowhere near that patient. How do you go about creating your designs for your creations, such as for mini pics? That is a great question. I am actually currently in the works on a whole video just about making your own mini pics, so I'm going to leave that out for now. In terms of my pop art, I really just used to eyeball it most of the time. I only started making patterns just when people started emailing me, wanted to recreate my pieces, they were looking for help, but I can give you a little insight into how the process works. Take a look here. This is my piece I call the perfect cheeseburger. Coming down from the heavens to answer our hungry prayers. Oh, it looks so good. Alright, now here's a quick time lapse of me creating the pattern in a program called Pixelmator. It's a decent program, not quite as good as Photoshop, but it's cheaper, so hey. I've got my little perler palette there that I whipped up. I don't think the values are 100% accurate, but it works for me. As you can see, I usually have the grid visible, but once the piece starts taking shape, I prefer to work on the details without it, trying to envision what it will look like in beads. And there you go! Just like any drawing or painting, the key is to work on it until it's to your liking. Honestly, the hardest step is getting started, so I say just dive in and adjust as you go. Would you ever consider doing a joint collaboration Perler Bead art piece with another Perler Bead artist? Yes, definitely! In fact, I've had a big Perler Bead project in the back of my mind for years. Maybe it's time. But let me test the waters here a little bit. I have a question for you, audience. If I were to propose a project that would require you to send me a Perler Bead piece, no bigger than a single pegboard, no canvas or anything, just the Perler Bead piece itself, would you be interested? I know, you would need more details. But just let me know your initial reaction to such a proposal. Let me know in the comments. You know what to do. What are your top three favorite videos? Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, well, I will say that the Super Mario Bros. 3 item piece video, that one probably has my favorite opening, talking about the console wars, like it's Lord of the Rings or something. I thought that was pretty funny. And then I really like the donut video. I know the project wasn't anything spectacular. It was just a fun video to shoot and edit. Oh, I really thought uh, that Hamilton video that I released recently went pretty well. I worked on those lyrics for a long time, so I'm, maybe I'm just really happy to be done with that. Oh, and I really like my Super Mario Kart video. Like, if I was going to show somebody one episode of Pixel Art Show just so they could get the kind of vibe for it, that might be the one I would go for. It's got a good balance of uh, information, my thoughts on the subject, and it results in a pretty cool piece. What is your favorite color of perler bead? I couldn't possibly choose! <laughs> 
but I am particularly fond of toothpaste, cheddar, and bubble gum. Where and how can you sell your perler bead projects when you are a kid? When you're a kid? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, if your family ever has a yard sale, that might be a good time to give it a shot. I know you have to be 18 to start an Etsy store, so maybe you can get your parents or a teacher to sponsor you. But just be aware, that's a very big step. You would be essentially running a business, like with deadlines and shipping information, and you have to stock up on packing materials, and you have to make spreadsheets with how much money you take in and then deduct Etsy's fees and the cost of your shipping supplies. Um, honestly, for now, you're probably just better off selling to people you know, like friends and relatives and people like that. Trust me, the business part of this craft is not nearly as much fun as just making stuff, so enjoy your childhood. <laughs> how long does it take you to make a video and upload it? Well, it depends on the video. I'd release one every day if it were up to me, but this is an art tutorial kind of channel. I have to come up with the pieces, uh, meticulously design them, and then actually create them in the beads, and then assemble them all together. That's like almost a week's work right there. And then I start writing my script, decide what I want to say about this piece, how it inspires me, why I decided to make this, shoot the footage of myself with the perler wall back there, and then finally I can edit it together and upload it for you guys. But as you can tell, it's a pretty time-consuming process. Of course, I'm used to that. When you spray paint your canvases, how do you paint the sides without the paint chunking up? <laughs> chunking up? That's a new one. Um, well, the secret is just keep your hand moving. You don't want to stay on one spot even for a second. Always moving back and forth, and don't be in a rush to cover the whole canvas in one coat. I always do three coats, so it's always a nice solid finish with no chunking up. <laughs> Alright, next question. You drop a bead on the pegboard. It doesn't go where you were going to put it, but it lands in a spot where that color bead will go. Do you leave the bead or move it to where it was gonna go? Whoa. Well, if it's the right color bead for that spot, I'll just leave it. Like it was fated to go there. Do you not think it's quite spooky how often you pick up the exact amount of beads for a little section you're doing? Happens to me all the time. That happens to me all the time too! Seriously! I'm starting to wonder if I can subconsciously tell how many beads I need to finish a little section, and then I'll somehow grab that exact same amount from the drawer. Like I'm developing some sort of superpower. It's pretty lame as far as superpowers goes, but I'll take it. Would you ever consider using both perler and the vast array of art goal colors to make super detailed portraits? In my early days of getting into this craft, I used all kinds of brands, mixing them together all the time to have the biggest palette available. But I found that they didn't melt consistently the same, you know what I mean? Now this was several years ago, so maybe things have changed. But for now, I'm really happy with Perler's color selection and melting consistency, so I'm going to stick with Perler for now. I really love your video essays that accompany your projects. They differentiate your videos and make them lots of fun. If you didn't have the Perler Beat platform, would you still try to make these videos about your passions? Honestly, probably not. Um, oh, and thank you for your kind words, by the way. That really means a lot to me. I appreciate it. Um, I've said this before, but I'm very much a hands-on creative person. I like to make things as opposed to just talk about things. And my openings where I talk about the subject matter, um, <laughs> maybe for too long sometimes, but it's really just a way to segue into the artwork. I like to tell you guys about what inspires me, be it Rick and Morty, or the Empire State Building, or Twin Peaks, or anything else. I feel like that's something I can offer you that nobody else can, you know? What my art means to me, why I choose to make it, my thoughts and experiences with it. Where did you get the spray paints you use for your canvases? Michael's Craft Store, Design Ma Let me show you. Michael's Craft Store, Design Master Spray Paint. Good stuff. Have you ever thought about using the mini beads as an eye color, meaning stacking them inside a regular bead, if that makes sense? That does make sense, and I have tried that. I used it on the Skull Kid from Majora's Mask. Check it out right here. I thought it turned out pretty well. I haven't done it since, but it's definitely something to consider in your own work if you like. Have you ever made a creation using only one color? Um, I made the T-Rex from the Jurassic Park logo that was all black. Oh, and those Adirondack chairs I made were each one color. Uh, that shining piece only used dark green beads. And the Mets logo was just orange. That's all that comes to my mind at the moment. Why don't I own more stuff by you? Good question, but you have no one to blame but yourself. Okay, my friends, I think that's going to do it for this round of Shop Talk. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions, some on YouTube, some on Facebook, some on Instagram. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to let me know in the comments how you would feel about sending a one pegboard-sized perler piece to me 
in order to contribute to a big project something truly unique. Mysterious. Lots of cool stuff coming out in the pipeline. You know I usually uh, like to finish my project in batches. Well, this batch is almost done, and it is a doozy. I can't wait to share it with you. I'll see you soon. Okay, say bye, Pixie. Say bye. Bye. That, that means goodbye.